If you're going to be doing machine learning, then you probably want to use a dedicated graphics card, like an RTX 3090, for example, if you have one of those laying around. And I'm talking about desktops here. If you're on a laptop, though, the story is a little bit different. And that's what I'm going to try to show today, because here I've got an XPS 15. It's a Dell machine. It has the Intel Core i9 12th generation chip in there, 32 gigs of RAM on that machine. And it has an RTX 3050 tie board in there. Now, because it's a laptop, it had to make it tiny, tiny. It's not like one of those big, gigantic desktop based 3050s that you'll get. Same thing for this one. It's a laptop and it has a 3070 in it, but it's a mobile 3070. So it's going to be not as powerful. Now this machine is an Asus Rogue Strix. It has an AMD 5900HX in there and the RTX 3070. This is what I use for my machine learning tasks. And for the most part, it does a good job. If I were to get a desktop, a PC desktop with a dedicated Nvidia card in there, like a 3070, it would outperform this 3070. Now here we've got an Apple MacBook Pro with an M1 Max chip in there. Now the M1 Max, because it's an SOC or system on chip, it does everything. It does the CPU tasks, as well as the GPU tasks all together. And the 64 gigabytes of RAM that's in here, that's shared between the CPU and the GPU. And that becomes important in what I'm gonna demonstrate in a little bit. Now recently, PyTorch has become aware of Apple Silicon. <laughs> uh, it has not become yet self-aware, but it's now Apple Silicon compatible. So it can run on the CPU, it can run on the GPU, it can run on CUDA. And Sebastian Rashka created a benchmark that collects the information people can submit by running his test on the M1s, the M1 Pro, M1 Max, M1 Ultra. I've submitted my test there and I did a video on this recently. So if you wanna see those results, you can check that out. The M1 Ultra, of course, being an SOC from Apple Silicon that's in the Mac Studio, which is desktop. So that's why I'm not including it here. So in this blog, post he actually outlines the nightly PyTorch build and that's why I have installed on all these machines and that supports Apple Silicon the reason I want to use that version is because I want to run the same version on all these machines to get a bit of a comparison going here so this links out to his repository which is the code itself now if you go in here, you have three different tests in here, three different algorithms for running three different types of machine learning. The one that's really a beast is this VGG 16-CIFAR 10. So that was a big test and it takes a while to finish, especially on a CPU. And you can run the same tests, there's three tests in here on CPU, Nvidia GPU using this CUDA flag or the Apple M1 using the MPS flag. So I've got all three of these set up. I'm gonna run the MLP test, which is a shorter test so that we can get some numbers going here, right? It's it's time in that video to get some numbers showing. I'm talking too much. And the device that I wanna set here is CPU to start with. Now this script spits out the time at the end, so I'm just gonna kick all three of these off and we'll see what happens. It doesn't take very long. It's probably gonna finish by the time I'm done with a sentence. Okay, maybe not. Anyway, here are the numbers. Oh, this one's taking a while. These two are done. This one's still working on it. So on the CPU, this is an Intel 12th generation. This is the brand new Intel chip, 12,900, and it finished this test in 0.21 of a minute. Seems like it's pretty fast. And with this kind of test, it's um, kind of hard to compare across multiple machines like that because it's such a short test. I will be comparing these in longer tests, so make sure you subscribe to see those. But just to give you an idea here, the AMD machine finished that in 0.46 minutes. So almost half a minute, which is more than two times longer than the new Intel Core i9s. But the M1 Max finished that same test in 0.1 of a minute, more than two times faster than the Intel. And that was the CPU test, which I'm gonna run just one more time to get an average. And we got pretty much the exact same numbers, 0.21 on the Core i9, 0.45 on the AMD 5900, and 0.1 on the M1 Max. Now let's run the same test using the GPU. So on, on the X64 based machines, the non-Apple Silicon versions, I'm gonna switch the device type to CUDA, but there is no CUDA on the M1 Max. However, there is the option for running this on the GPU by using the switch called MPS. So 
let's start these up and see what happens. The interesting thing is that these numbers are not that much different than the CPU numbers. So we got 0.21 using the RTX 3050 Ti, 0.45 using the RTX 3070, and 0.12 using the M1 Max. And because this test is not that long, I want to show you something else. Let's switch over to the VGG test. And this is exactly the reason that I was talking about that unless you have a dedicated desktop with a giant discrete graphics card in there that has a lot of memory, 16 gigabytes or 24 gigabytes of RAM by itself just for the video, there are going to be certain tests that are not going to work as well for you unless you have that or the new Apple Silicon machines. So here's what I'm talking about. I'm gonna set this test to VGG, leave the device at CUDA, and this is gonna happen for both of, what the And this is gonna happen for both of these machines. And on the M1 Max, I'm still gonna continue using MPS, but the test is gonna be VGG as well. Let's go. Hmm, well, look at that. The test is already done on these two RTX machines, but it's still running on the M1 Max machine. But it's not really done, is it? It gave me an error on these, and that's because these ran out of memory. So the RTX 3050 Ti has only four gigabytes of memory available to the video card. The RTX 3070 has six gigabytes available to it, while the M1 Max is sharing the 64 gigabytes with the CPU on the SoC. So, it can use as much memory as it wants for the process. And that's a huge benefit if you're going mobile, isn't it? Now, yeah, you can play around with the batch size and things like that and do other kinds of flags on the system to limit the amount of memory that this particular machine learning algorithm is using. But then you're basically trimming the performance out of having a discrete graphics cards in these laptops. And if we take a look at the activity monitor here on the Mac, you'll see that the CPU is nice and cool, nice and calm. And where's most of the work happening? Ah, look at that. There's that GPU history graph. And it is being utilized quite nicely there. Those blue lines show us that, yes, it is the GPU part of the M1 Max that is being utilized. And if we have a look at the memory, this task is using 20 gigabytes of memory. So to execute this particular test, you would most likely need a video card that it has even more than 16 gigs of RAM. It's hitting 28 gigabytes right now as we speak. 36. Look at that. So it's going to keep munching on that memory from the GPU because it sees that the GPU is needing that. And uh, did you check the price recently on uh, a 36 gigabyte dedicated NVIDIA card? How much is one of those? So it turns out that doing machine learning when you're mobile is actually not bad on Apple Silicon. And with the new M2s coming out right around the corner, it might be even better. There is one thing I haven't tried yet. I actually have a project that I use this machine for, and that's because that project uses CUDA and PyTorch. But now that PyTorch is available for Apple Silicon, I may try it on my MacBook Pro to see how that does. If you want me to make a video on that, let me know in the comments down below. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks, folks, and I'll see you next time.